Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a butterscotch pudding cake, also known as a pudding chumere, which when translated means poor man's pudding. And this is what it looks like. It says two parts to it. It has this really moist white cake that's all covered in a deliciously sweet butterscotch sauce. So, first thing you need to do, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need an eight inch square pan, that's 20 centimeters. And you could use, I'm using an earthenware pan, uh, pan. you could use a metal pan, you could use a glass pan, whatever you have in the house. And then I'm going to um, butter this. Now you wanna make sure that your uh, pan has at least, I think that's about two inch sides. That's five centimeters. So like I said, you can butter this. I just melted a little bit of butter and then with the pastry brush, I'm gonna brush. Or you could just spray it with one of those nonstick sprays. Okay, so two parts to this cake. We're gonna start, this pudding cake, we're gonna start with the cake batter. So if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment or you could just use a hand mixer. First thing you need is four tablespoons, 55 grams of butter. I'm using unsalted, I prefer the flavor, but you could use salted. Have it at room temperature. And then I'm going to add to that. Now, because we're, we're going to, like it's, the sauce part of this is a butterscotch, which is very sweet. So I'm cutting back on my sugar in my cake batter. So I'm only using a quarter of a cup, 50 grams of granulated white sugar. So what I'm gonna do, beat these two together, get um, nice and smooth, a little air in there. So probably a couple minutes on medium high speed. Okay, so as always, scrape the uh, sides and the bottom of your bowl as much as you need to. You wanna make sure everything's mixed together. So next, I'm going to add one large egg and have your egg at room temperature, along with just a half a teaspoon, uh, two, two grams of pure vanilla extract, just for a little bit of vanilla flavor. And then I'm just gonna beat that in. Now at this point, your batter is probably gonna look a little curdled because we have a lot of liquid here, but don't worry because as soon as we add the dry ingredients, it will smooth right out. So now for our dry ingredients, in a bowl I have one and a half cups, which is 195 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that is plain flour. To that, I'm going to add two teaspoons that's eight grams of baking powder, and then just a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Now, if you use salted butter, then I would just leave out that salt, and then I'm just gonna whisk, or you could whisk like I'm doing here, or you could even sift all your ingredients together. Just wanna make sure they're well mixed. And then you will also need three quarters of a cup, which is 180 milliliters, 180 grams of milk, have it at room temperature. I'm actually using a whole milk, a full fat. You could use a reduced fat. I wouldn't use a fat free, but um, a reduced fat. Of course, if you use a full fat, you get a, you know, your cake will be a little more rich tasting. So now what I'm gonna do is alternate the flour with the uh, milk. I'm gonna add, you know, maybe about a third of my flour mixture here. Beat that in. Be careful, you don't want it coming up in your face. Okay, and then add about half of the milk. Slowly beat this in. more flour. The rest of my milk. I'm going to 
scrape down my bowl here. Flour clinging to the sides. And then I'm just going to add the rest of my flour and beat that in. And we're done. So the, this is the cake part of our pudding cake. And what's really cool about this recipe is that the, the butterscotch sauce and the cake are baked in the pan together. So make sure you get all the flour mixed in here and then put it into our cake pan. Then you could just take the back of a spoon, or I've got an offset spatula, and I'm just going to spread this out evenly, as evenly as you can. And then I'm just going to clean up here, and then we'll be, I'll be right back, and we will make our butterscotch sauce. So for our butterscotch sauce, you will need a saucepan, and in the saucepan put one cup which is 200 grams of firmly packed light brown sugar. And then I'm just putting two tablespoons, 25 grams of butter, and I've just cut it into small pieces so it will uh, melt faster. And then one cup, 240 milliliters, 240 grams of just water. And the secret ingredient <laughs> is a half a cup, 120 milliliters, 120 grams of pure maple syrup. I'm using a grade A amber, but you could use whatever you have. And then what I'm going to do is put this over medium heat and, you know, I'm stirring quite often, I'm just going to bring it up to a boil. So some people say, why is this called a pudding chumere, which I, I guess the literal translation means um, unemployed worker pudding. Although most people go, poor man's pudding, you say, how could it be a poor man's pudding when it has pure maple syrup, which today is very expensive. And the reason is, this recipe originated, they think, back around during the Depression. It comes from Canada, the province of Quebec, which just happens to be where they grow, where maple trees grow, and that's where you get the syrup from. So I guess, way back when, you know, if you lived on a farm and you had some maple trees, then maple syrup would be quite inexpensive. So that's the story. <laughs> so we're just going to melt everything together and bring it just to a boil. Okay, we're up to a boil. So there we go. I'm going to take it off the heat. Unplug that. So now, what's kind of cool is we're just going to pour all this liquid right on top of our cake batter. Try to do that as evenly as possible. Now it's going to look a bit of a mess. Don't worry because what's really cool about this cake is because as it bakes the sauce thickens and it drops to the bottom of the pan and the cake rises to the top. So it will be done when it uh, is a beautiful golden brown. It's kind of the top of the surface is a little cracked and all kind of bumpy. And, but it starts to shrink away from the sides of the pan. Toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. And you might even see the, the sauce starting to bubble around the edges. So now that will take about 35 minutes. Now, it does depend on the type of pan you're using. I'm using an earthenware. It might take a little longer, and a glass pan might take a little longer than that. And if you're using a metal, a little less. So watch it after about 30 minutes. So.
So doesn't that look a lot different from when we put this in the oven? As you can see, the cake has risen to the top. It's a beautiful golden brown, kind of bumpy and little cracks. You can see the sauce is bubbling away. So now put your pan on a wire rack. Now I do like to serve this like when it's really quite warm. So I'm going to let it cool down. It's a little too hot right now to eat, but I'm going to let it cool down, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And when we come back, we will try some. So I let this cool 10, 15 minutes. So let's try it. Just using a spoon. And, you know, I like uh, use, baking it in this earthenware. So I could just take this right to the table and let uh, people serve themselves. So you take a little cake and then, you know, whether you can see that, there's lots of sauce. Just pour that over the top. Now, as this cool, you know, if you let it cool down, I like it hot, but if you let it cool down over time, that sauce on the bottom will thicken. But please try it when it's freshly baked. So, and you could serve it with a, you know, scoop of vanilla ice cream or a little just pouring cream over top. But I just like it as it is. Oh, <laughs> it's delicious. Now I will say this is a cake my mom always used to make us in the winter. So I have a special fondness for it. You know, it's sweet. I mean, can't get away from that with the butterscotch sauce, but I don't find it like ridiculously sweet. And that is because we did cut back on the sugar in the cake so that, you know, when the sauce, when you pour that sauce over the top, and as it bakes, you know, some of the sauce does get into the cake and bake right in it. And then you get the rest on the bottom. So it's really nice. And I mean, depending how much sauce, you can pour a little, a lot. It's up to you. But I mean, it is an excellent dessert for the winter. Now, like I said, best freshly baked, nice and hot. Cake's nice and dense and moist. But, you know, it's still really good. You could let it cool down, cover it, refrigerate it, and then the next day, you know, just put it in the microwave and warm it up, and I think it's, it's almost as good. So try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.